Hello and welcome to this episode of Positively Negative. Today we're doing something a little bit different. As you might be able to see behind me, we are driving in a game reserve. Um, we're at Krahakama Game Reserve in Port Elizabeth. And what's really cool about this place is that it's in pretty much the middle of PE. Well, maybe on the outskirts of Port Elizabeth, but it's sort of in the city, uh, within the city limits. And it's sort of a residential place as well. Um, but there's all sorts of animals here, giraffes, uh, rhinoceros, uh, water buffalo, all sorts of big things. So I decided, you know, lockdown is kind of easing, so finally we can start doing these fun things again. So we're doing a bit of a family outing today. Um, my brother's driving the car, my sister's behind the camera, and I'm going to be shooting two film cameras today. Um, my Mamiya Flex C2, which I've already covered uh, in another video, and my Nikomat FTN, which I've had for a couple of months now, but I haven't made a video about yet. So, on my Nikkor mat, I've got a 135mm uh, f2.8 prime lens, a uh, very nice lens. On my Mamiya, I've got my 80mm f2.8 standard, uh, standard, uh, standard prime lens, so that we have sort of two different fields of view. I'm also shooting four different film stocks today. Uh, first up, I've got Kentmere 400 black and white film in my 35mm camera, and I've got Ilford Delta 400 in the Mamiya. And then I also have two rolls of, I've got a Kodak Color Plus 200 and Kodak Pro Image 100. So we've got a nice mix of black and white and color film today. So hopefully we see some interesting animals and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this camera as I'm using it because it's got a few little interesting quirks um, that make it different from the more famous F1 and F2. Cool. I've taken my first couple of shots of the ostriches you saw earlier um, so now I think it's not a bad time to talk about the, the camera in a bit more detail. So the Nikormat series were a series of sort of they were called like semi-professional cameras um, in the 60s and 70s made by Nikon. So they're Nikons but they're called Nikormats. Um, in Japan and America I think they're called Nikomats but uh, it's the same camera, exactly the same camera. So these were sort of marketed more to your amateur um, photographers or your sort of semi-professional photographers at the same time that the Nikon F and F2 were being marketed to true professionals, um, whatever that means. Um, so what makes the Nikormat FTN a bit different from, the, from the, the Nikon Fs and the F1s is in the layout of the controls. If you see on the top plane, uh, plate of the camera, you won't see any uh, shutter speed dial. The shutter speed dial is actually around the, the, the base of the lens. So you actually change your shutter speed around the base of the lens, like so. Which is a, an interesting sort of uh, different way of doing it for SLR cameras. But I actually find that it works quite well because your shutter speeds are visible in your uh, viewfinder. So your thumb is right here ready to, to change your shutter speeds as you're shooting through the viewfinder. So it's actually not the worst, worst design decision of all time. Um, other features, it has a, a meter which takes a battery, you need a battery for the light meter. It's a sort of um, matchstick needle light meter like in the Pentax K1000. And you will see it also has on the top plane a, a, a meter window as well which is, which is pretty cool. I've never seen that on anything else before. Um, when you mount lenses onto the Nikkor mats, um, you have to do a little jiggle, it's interesting. To calibrate the, the lens with the light meter, when you mount the lens on the camera body, you have to open the lens as wide as it can go and then close it down again. And that basically informs the camera of the, the, the available apertures and then sort of communicates with the light meter uh, correctly. So all in all, it's a massive heavy thing. It's quite a lot bigger than my Pentaxes. Um, it feels very solid. It's very wonderfully built and it feels great to use. So I'm really enjoying shooting with it. And uh, now we're going to carry on and see if we can see some more interesting animals.
just over this this hill behind us there's a giraffe so we're just going up and around now hopefully when we go around the hill uh, we'll get a better a better angle on him um, there, there, is it. there we can see his head just sticking out I don't know if you'll be able to see um, Liam just stop just stop for me please it's not now. no that's good that's there nice, go, that's there, nice. Nice. there we see his head sticking out of the foliage Alright, so we've just stopped uh, at a little quiet space, um, so I thought it would be a good idea to talk a little bit more about the camera. So, there were quite a few Nikkor mats made, um, I think the first one was called the FT, and then this was this one is the FTN, which is the second, or maybe, maybe the third iteration of the camera. Um, there were later ones, I think called the EL, and perhaps there was another one, but those ones had um, electronic components, which uh, make me a little bit nervous. Um, Although by, by all accounts, they're still very reliable cameras. I've also seen um, EL ones that come in, in full black, uh, not a, a silver body, just a black body, which is really quite cool if that's what you're interested in. Um, my one I got specifically because I have a range of Nikon lenses, sort of from the 60s. Uh, I've got everything from like a 20 millimeter, like ultra wide, all the way to this 135 um, telephoto. Um, and I didn't have a body that could take these lenses. So I decided to get something sort of cheap and, and that I could use for these lenses. And I saw this uh, Nikormat FTN on sale uh, here in South Africa for about 800 Rand, um, which is, yo, help me Liam, maths, 800 Rand? What, what's dollar, 16, like 50 to 70 dollars? So like, yeah, so like $60. Let's say it's about 60 US dollars, which I mean is a bargain, really. Um, on other sites, I've seen these cameras going for as much as the Nikon F uh, and F2. Um, their reputation seems to be gr uh, building and growing. It used to be that they were sort of less known, but now I think people are, are catching on to the Nikon Matte craze. Um, and I can see why. It's a great camera. It's also full of features. It's got a mirror lockup feature. It's got um, depth of field um, a check button here. It's got a self timer. It's got uh, shutter speeds ranging from one, uh, one second to one one thousandth of a second and a bulb mode. It takes a normal shutter release cable. Um, and basically it's a fully featured camera of the time, SLR camera of the time. And honestly you can't go wrong with it. Um, I really like mine and uh, I can highly recommend them if you find one for a good price. So we've entered the cheetah enclosure now, so hopefully we see some cheetahs. Uh, this is quite exciting. There's one right there. There's one literally right under a tree. Okay, or in the close. Okay, there's two. There's multiple there. Oh, no, you're Okay, we've reached the end of our game drive, uh, so we're just sort of walking around the 
uh, cheetah enclosure, uh, which I believe is to that side. And there's like a nice walkway where you can see birds and stuff and hopefully take some nice pictures. So I've taken both cameras with me. I have now a color negative uh, Kodak Color Plus 200 speed film in the Nikon and Ilford Delta 400 black and white in the Mamiya. So let's see what we get. Alright guys, so we're going to head home now. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll do a more in-depth analysis of, of the Nikomat FTN um, later on, but I thought ugh, I just wanted to do something a bit different today. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.